Hi, welcome back. Okay, today we do Vigo Brun's epic proof about how many twin primes there are. How many even numbers are there? Infinite. Numbers less than 100? Finite. Squares? Infinite. Primes? Infinite. Thanks, Euclid. Primes of the form n squared plus 1? Nobody knows. Perfect numbers? Nobody knows. Narcissistic numbers? There's 88 of them. Twin primes? Nobody knows. So how many twin primes should there be? Imagine if the primes were like this. Jump by two, jump by two, keep going. Now jump by four, jump by four, keep going. Now jump by six. Well, we'd say that 1315 is the last twin prime pair and there's no more. The twin prime conjecture would be obviously false. But in our world, primes are clumpy and twin primes seem to keep showing up. So um, anyway, at least we can prove that they're super rare. And that's what Vigo Brun did by developing some methods based on the sieve of Aristosthenes. Now, before we get to that, let me address some of this channel's frequently asked questions. Uh, why are you doing this? Not sure. Are you okay mentally? Yes, for sure, pretty sure. Where can I donate? I accept Bitcoin. Uh, you wrote a book, what's a book? This is a book, Math Kook, the book. Okay, let's think about all the potential twin primes up to x. We're going to gradually sieve these out to the not twin prime category and see what's left. First, sieve with prime 2. Okay, that's going to remove half the candidates right there. Obviously, 8, 10 can't be a twin prime because neither 8 nor 10 is prime. Okay, let's put those back. Okay, now sieve with prime 3. This is more interesting because we don't just sieve out a third of the candidates, we sieve out two thirds because if either number is a multiple of three, then this can't be a twin prime because to be a twin prime, both numbers have to be prime. Okay, now let's put those back. Now sieving with prime five, we get the same effect. We don't just sieve out one fifth, we sieve out two fifths of the candidates. Okay, let's put those back. Now, what if we sieve using 2, 3, and 5? Then remaining, we should have x minus half of x minus 2 thirds of x minus 2 fifths of x. But that's less than 0 remaining. Okay, so we accidentally sieved out some of the pairs twice or even three times. So we have to adjust for overcounting like this. So we need to take a closer look, for example, about sieving with 3 and 5. Okay, first of all, this is a huge amount of sieving. Even with just 3 and 5, hardly anything survives. Okay, uh, so these are all the pairs that come out with 3, with 5, and with both 3 and 5. So let's take a look at the intersection. Anything where the first number is divisible by 15, like 15, 17, and 30, 32. There are about x over 15 of those. Also, anything where the second number is divisible by 15. And also, and this is now way different from Aristosthenes, anything where the first number is divisible by 3 and the second number is divisible by 5 and vice versa where the first number is divisible by 5 and the other by 3. So for every divisor of 15 we're gonna pull out some number of pairs uh, and you know uh, we're lucky that x was 30 here. If it was 40 it wouldn't divide evenly and we have a lot of room for error. So anyway we wind up with this uh, for our upper bound on the number of twin primes. So this inclusion exclusion formula keeps expanding every time we add a new prime to our sieve. Imagine once we get to sieving with 10 or 20 primes, we're gonna have to deal with all the different ways that the products of those primes can sieve stuff out. So there's gonna be a ton of terms and a ton of floor symbols to worry about. So Vigo Brun needs to come up with some first class ideas, which he does. Let's compare our current situation with what we had last time when we were just counting the regular primes. We used the first n primes to sieve where n is going to be some function of x. And when we dropped the floor symbols, we could magically count the numbers that didn't get sieved out as x over log n. But to keep this inequality functioning, we had to throw in this error term to account for how much we misestimated things by dropping the floor symbols. So now we have to pick n. If we pick it too high, like x or square root of x, the error term is going to dominate, and we'll just wind up saying pi of x is less than x. Not too useful. And if we pick n too low, like 1 or 2, the main term will dominate, but again, we'll just say that pi of x is less than x. So n equals log x turned out to be a sweet spot, 
giving us a dominant main term that's actually useful saying, hey, the larger x is, the lower percentage of primes between one and x, aka the primes thin out at this rate. Now, Vigo Bruin's got a more severe situation because his error term is way worse. So he decides to sieve with all primes less than y, where again, y is a function of x, but critically, he decides to ignore all the inclusion-exclusion terms past combinations of 2k primes, where k is some function of y. And this is totally legit for the inequality because everything past here turns out total, totals to negative. So by lopping off lots of terms, he limits the errors due to flooring. And with some careful work, he winds up with this main term and this error term. And now he has to thread the needle. His sweet spot is to sieve with all primes up to x to the 1 over 12 log log x and to lop off the inclusion exclusion formula at k equals 6 log log y. That's the sweet spot. Now he can say the number of twin primes less than x can't be more than this. And for large x the error term is negligible. So that's it. Now with more time we can fill in the details but that's the outline. Now Vigo Brun has to write up his result. Unfortunately this is not a catchy title for a paper. Maybe he could say something like twin primes th thin out faster than primes, but he's got a better idea. Remember our previous episode about reciprocals? If we take all the numbers, their reciprocals uh, sum diverges to infinity. Same for primes. But for numbers that are more rare, like squares and powers of two, the reciprocals converge. And Brune proved that uh, the twin primes are sieved out so quickly that their reciprocals fall on this side of the fence. So he wrote this paper, with a title that even a math kook can appreciate. Mathematicians after Brune were able to improve his result to x over log x squared. And since the denominator is bigger, twin primes thin out way faster than regular primes. But unlike for regular primes, Brune couldn't show a lower bound on twin primes. Even a super weak lower bound like log 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 x would be enough to prove the twin prime conjecture, but no luck so far. Can we even use sieve counting to produce a lower bound? Sure, after we sieve, we don't say there are less than such and such number of potential primes remaining. Instead, we say there are at least such and such number of definite primes remaining. And with regular primes, we can divide one to x into two intervals. If you can show uh, there's always a prime in the second interval, then by the same argument, there's a prime in this interval and so on indefinitely. People have been trying such stuff with twin primes, but with less success. A major breakthrough did come in 2013 with Yi Tang Zhang, who made advances in sieve technology to the point where he could say there's an infinite number of primes less than 70 million apart. So uh, the number of such pairs grows with x, though Zhang's method didn't say how quickly. So maybe a future mathematician will say. And maybe another future mathematician will give a similar result to prove the twin prime conjecture. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time.